Hey, what's up everyone? Today we'll be doing a new video on A-level physics. The chapter we're gonna be looking at is kinematics and hopefully you guys will find this video helpful. And that being said, let's do it. So the main contents of this chapter is about linear motion and non-linear motion. And we're gonna be working according to Cambridge learning outcomes in the first part. Is about defined displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Distance is defined as the total length covered, respective of the direction of motion, aka the actual path taken by the object. Displacement is defined as the distance moved in a certain direction. And that's why, because of the direction, it's called a vector, and the distance doesn't include any kind of direction. It takes the whole path the object has, has, has taken and not include the direction. That's why it is a scalar. Speed is defined as a distance traveled per unit time. Velocity is defined as the rate of change of displacement. Now, um, here it is important to note that as we mentioned rate, it already includes time. So either we say rate of change of, of displacement or displacement per unit time but it is incorrect to say the rate of change of displacement per unit time because rate already means time acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity now we're going to be dealing with graphs and part b c d and e of the learning outcomes are all concerned with graphs and calculations involved with these graphs. I'm going to be doing it one by one, starting with the distance time graph, and I will try to cover as many uh, interpretations we can have from the graph, calculations we'll have from the graph, and other uh, things we need to know about it. If a distance time graph is a straight line like CD, this shows that the gradient is constant at all points, and this implies that the object is moving with a uniform velocity. Now, by definition, we, we said that velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So the formula that I'm going to be using is velocity equals delta s by delta t. Now, this delta, this small triangle, denotes change. So this is change in displacement divided by change in time. Now, uh, let's take it uh, S1 and S0, and T1 and T0. So the change in displacement is S1 minus S0, and the change in time is T1 minus T0. So essentially, to find the velocity in a distance time graph, we're just calculating the gradient of this line. So we can come to the, to the conclusion that velocity in a distance time graph is equal to the gradient of the line or the gradient of uh, at a particular point as we're going to consider in the next example looking at, the, at this example we see that the line is a, a curve from c a b so this we conclude that this is a non-uniform velocity and how are we going to calculate the velocity is just by taking the gradient of the tangent at any point Let's consider a point E and let's try to find what is the velocity at that point. So once we've drawn the tangent, we try to find the change in displacement on the y-axis and the change in time in the time axis, in the x-axis. So our formula here, strictly speaking, it is the instantaneous velocity that we are trying to calculate. So at E, the instantaneous velocity is the change in displacement and the change in time at the point E, given by the tangent of the line at the point E. Now, at point A, we see that the tangent to the curve is a horizontal line. So here, we can conclude that the velocity is zero. Now, let's consider a point X. And draw the tangent to the curve at the point X. So 
So at the point x, we see that the gradient is sloping down. So this shows that the velocity is negative here. And at the point e, the, the danger is sloping upwards. So the velocity here is positive. What this shows is that let's consider moving to the right to be the positive direction. Uh, moving to the right be the positive direction. So a negative velocity shows that the car is actually moving to the left. This actually makes pretty sense considering the graph. So here what we can describe about this motion about the motion of this object is that from C um, to close to A, the car or the object is moving in a positive direction. And arriving at point A, the velocity here becomes zero. So the car here is momentarily at rest and the car starts going to the left again. So this is actually like projectile motion where, where the, the, the object is going um, in the positive direction and then stops momentarily and return back to the left. So basically we can set up any distance time graph or a displacement time graph, we can find the instantaneous velocity from the gradient of the line or of the tangent to the curve. And we can also denote the direction of motion of the object by the sign associated with the velocity of the object. Now we're going to be looking at velocity time graph, where we can find the acceleration and the distance. The acceleration is found by gradient and distance by the area under the graph. And we can know if the object is moving with uniform speed of velocity or um, constant velocity or uh, non-uniform velocity accordingly. This graph shows that the object is moving with a constant velocity. The second line shows that the object is moving with uniform velocity. That is, the velocity is increasing steadily with time. Let's consider graph number three. So here the object is moving with non-uniform velocity. That is, the velocity change is not steady with time. And at the point E, if we draw a tangent to the curve here, we see that the acceleration is positive. And at the point X, if we draw a tangent to the curve, we see that the acceleration is negative. And to determine V distance the car or the object has traveled, we just need to calculate the area under this graph. And the acceleration at point E is calculated by the change in velocity at point E and the change in time, so delta V by delta T. Moving on to part F, it says derive from the definitions of velocity and acceleration equations that represent uniformly accelerated motion in a straight line. Now from this learning outcome, it is clear that the equations of motion that we're going to be deriving in this example is strictly applicable if the object is moving with uniform acceleration and also that the object is moving in a straight line. By definition, we know that velocity is equal to the change in displacement over change in time. Let's replace the symbols. Velocity v equals displacement, I'm going to be denoting it by s, delta s over delta t. So this is our first fundamental equation, v is equal to delta s by delta t. For acceleration, it is change in velocity divided by change in time. In terms of symbol, this gives a is equal to final velocity, which is v, minus initial velocity, which is u, divided by time. Rearranging this formula, we get v minus u equals 80. So I bring the u on the other side. This becomes v squared to u plus 80. This is our second equation of motion. By definition, we also know that Total distance is equal to average velocity uh, times time. Total distance, again, denoted, we denote it by S equals average velocity is we take the total, so V plus U divided by 2 for the average. 
and times time. So this is our third equation of motion. From this equation here, we're going to make T the subject of formula and try to replace it in this equation here to come up with the next equation of motion. So here we get T is equal to V minus U over A. Let's replace it in this one. This becomes S is equal to half V plus U. Replacing T by V minus U over A. This becomes V minus U. The whole thing over A. Now let's try to bring the 2A on the other side. So this brings us to 2AS is equal to V plus U and V minus U. Now these two terms is just a difference of two squares. So we can rewrite this as 2AS is equal to V square minus U square. And let's bring the minus U square on the other side. And this gives us the equation. This gives us the equation V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. Again, using the equation S is equal to half V plus U T and V square to U plus A T. Now we'll try to replace V is equal to U plus A T in this equation. Here we get S square to half U plus A T plus U times T. Now let's try um, to simplify this bracket. So we get half 2U plus AT. On the outside we have T. And now let's expand this bracket. So we get S is equal to half 2UT plus AT squared. And taking the half inside the bracket, we get S equal to UT plus half a t square. So this is our next equation of motion. On the whole, we see that the equation of motions include v is equal to u plus a t, s is equal to half u v times t, u plus v times t, and v square is equal to u square plus 2s, and finally s is equal to u t plus half a t square. Now what is important is to know how we apply this equation. For example, in case we do not have um, a value for acceleration, then most probably we're going to be using the second formula. And in case we don't have the final velocity given, so we most probably going to be using the last formula. The next part, we're going to be looking at motion of bodies falling in a uniform gravitational field without air resistance. Let's take the example of a ball which is thrown upwards. So initially it has a maximum velocity v which by convention is we're going to take as positive because we will consider upward motion as being positive and downward motion as being negative so initially it has a speed in this a velocity in this direction which is positive the ball goes up and uh, will reach a maximum height which we're going to call h and will fall back again and will rebound goes up and goes back down again and we'll repeat this motion again and again now we'll try to describe this motion that the ball is doing in the form of a graph to make it easier to understand i have labeled the position of the ball initially here as being a on the top of the trajectory as being b and when it hits the ground again as being c now the graph here we see that at A, the object has a velocity V. So initially it has the maximum velocity V. As it goes up, we have the weight of the ball, which is mg, acting downwards. So it's like a retarding force on the ball. So the ball slows down and is momentarily at rest at the top of its trajectory, at B. And at B we see that the velocity is zero. Once at B, we have weight acting which, which, which keeps acting downwards, so the ball will accelerate downward and increases its velocity and hits the ground again at velocity V, but this time has a negative value by convention. So at C, the ball hits the ground here. Now to calculate the distance H, that is when the ball has speed positive V and when the velocity is 
0 at the top, we just have to calculate the area under this graph. So this gives the height h. And the gradient of this line here is numerically equal to the gravitational field strength that is g. As the, as the ball reaches c, it rebounds on the floor and attains another speed velocity v, but this time it is lesser than the initial velocity. So the ball hits the ground, attains a velocity v, and uh, again reaches momentary at rest and increases the speed, the velocity again to reach the floor again and rebounds again. So basically there's this loop which keeps on repeating itself. And every time we notice that the line A to C is parallel, which denotes in every case the gradient, which is equal to the gravitational, the gravitational field strength tree. We've seen that graphically we can determine values for H, for G, as well as for the time taken to reach the maximum height, which is at B. But now we'll try to apply equation of motion to this situation. The values that we have uh, is g and h and the time. So all these we're going to try to fit it in some equation of motion and try to mathematically derive equations which will fit to this situation. First of all, we're going to try to determine the value of h. And we're going to use the equation v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Now at b we see that the final velocity is zero. And at B, this will give, A and B will give us a distance H. So in this equation, we know that at B, the final velocity is zero. And in this case, we took the initial velocity as being, um, let's take it as V1. So here I'm going to put it uh, V1. And the graph also I'm gonna put it V1 here just not to confuse with V. Now we can rearrange our formula and write it as being so the V square is 0 square equals V1 square plus 2 a acceleration being the gravitational field strength which is G and S being our H we're looking for. So H is going to be minus v1 square divided by 2g. Now, as we have taken g downward as being negative g, so this is going to be replaced by minus v square over 2 minus g. It ends up being v1, so minus uh, v1 square divided by 2g. So h is equal to v1, the initial velocity at which the, bone, the ball is being thrown, squared, divided by 2g. The second part, we're going to find the time taken for the ball to reach the maximum height h. And let's denote this time as th. Here we're going to apply the formula v squared to u plus at. Once again, we know that the final velocity at b was 0, so this is 0, and the initial velocity was v1, plus the value of g, which was negative g in our case, and the maximum height, the time at b, which is th. Rearranging this gives us th is equal to v1 divided by g.